I'm Ryan Melvin, the TA for the lab part of mechanics this semester. And I am going to be doing several screencasts, both on problem solving and how to use MATLAB. The screen software, screencast software I'm using when I first started has this kind of nice infinite mirror effect that I thought was just cool and entertained me enough that I wanted to start the video with it. Also, the last couple of videos, I thought I'd set a hot key to record so that I didn't have to have the screen open. But apparently I was wrong and gave a 20 minute screencast on MATLAB for no one. So I just sat here and talked to myself about MATLAB for 20 minutes, which was excellent. But now that I'm sure the screen software is working, it at least appears to indicate it's recording since it offers me the option to stop recording. We're going to use MATLAB. And this is a Wake Forest standard laptop. This should look like your desktop if you just got your laptop. Um, now, if you've played around with things, obviously, your laptop probably has a different desktop, icons, whatever. But this is just the Wake Forest standard load. It comes with MATLAB on it. To open MATLAB, I'm going to hit the Windows key and then start typing the word MATLAB. You notice the computer finds it. I'll hit Enter to open it. Also notice that I am on the Wake Forest VPN. You can see my Cisco VPN is connected. You need to either be on campus or VPNed in to the school's network in order to use MATLAB. The MATLAB license manager um, only works if you are on Wake Forest campus or virtually on Wake Forest camp campus via VPN. Now that I've opened MATLAB, I have here the command window or interpreter for a more general computer term. And I can tell MATLAB to do things like add two and two. And it says the answer is four. And notice it even created a variable in memory with the name answer and the value four. I could also have told it to instead assign that to x. And now x has the value four. I could even assign x value six. Now x is assigned six. If I double click on x, MATLAB tells me this is a one by one double and it contains six. Now why does MATLAB say one by one double? MATLAB sees the world in matrices. Everything is a matrix. So six is a matrix of dimensions one by one and contains the entry six. And that is how MATLAB sees the world. Whether we have something that's one number or a hundred numbers, it's going to interpret it as a matrix. And you'll see that as we create our simple harmonic oscillator plot. Now, I want MATLAB to plot a harmonic oscillator. That is going to take more than one line. So you might naively think, well, can't I just tell MATLAB that the equation is r times cosine 2 times pi, oops, 2 times pi times t over my period tau? And I will say, no, thank you. It will take this to mean assign to the variable x in memory the value associated with r times cosine blah blah blah. But it doesn't know what r is, so as soon as it gets there in the sentence, assign to x r, MATLAB goes looking and says, hmm, I don't see an r over here. I'm afraid I can't help you. So we have to tell MATLAB what r is. We also have to tell it what t is. Now if we're plotting a simple harmonic oscillator, t won't just be one thing. It will be a set of things. t might be values from 1 to 100. And notice I can open that. Values from 1 to 100. Now notice I put the semicolon here. If I hadn't put the semicolon here, madness. Um, sorry, t equals 1 to 100. Malib would have showed me all that. So semicolon just means do it and don't show me the output. t could be a set of values 1 by 10 to 100. So this means start at 1. Go by tens to 100. Notice that's what it does. And if I really wanted to get to 100 exactly, I need to start at zero because it's going to start where you tell it to start. It's a computer. It will do what you say. So there's T. Now, if this window gets crowded and you want to get rid of everything in it, the command for that is CLC. And that clears out everything that was there, but keeps all the variables I assigned in memory. So remember, we're trying to plot this r times cosine 2 times pi times t over our period tau. Now right now, if I type this in, MATLAB would still object to not knowing what r is, but it would know what t is, and in fact I can perform operations on t. So let's just let it object. I can say let f equal t times 5. 
And now if we look at t, that's 0, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And if we look at f, that's 5, 100, 150, 200, so on. So it just multiplied every value in t by 5 and stored that as f. But that is still not what I want to do. I'm going to need to do a few things. So let's look at our equation again. I'm going to have to tell MATLAB what r is, what t is, and what tau is. Oh, by the way, the way I just opened that window to see what my commands were was hitting the up arrow. And then I can scroll through my past commands. So we're going to have to give MATLAB a set of instructions. And for a computer, a set of instructions is called a script. Handily, it has a button here that says new script. If I hit new script, it will store whatever it creates in C, users, Melvar L13, my username, documents MATLAB. This is the default MATLAB location, and if you just keep things there, no problem, no big deal. If you would like to move things somewhere else, you're free to. Um, you can move through your computer's file system, you can search for places, and so forth. And I do not do that. I just want to store things in the default location, simplest. If you do the most straightforward thing, your results will look exactly like mine. All right, so I'm going to create a new script or a new set of instructions for the computer. Traditionally, you start off by telling the computer what your script is. So I'm going to say, this is the file x of t.m. So you might try to pronounce this and think soft, soft. I'm just doing x as a function of t or x of t.m. .m is the MATLAB file type. Uh, I do not have to put the file name in the first line. MATLAB will be fine if I just start writing the script, but this is just kind of your practice. And then I'm going to tell what my script does. My script plots x equals r times cosine 2 pi t over the period tau. Now notice, if I start trying to do things with, say, t here, MATLAB will think I mean the t that I've already stored in memory. Let's try that. It's going to ask me to save this, x of t.m. Save. Notice it's now in my file explorer. And it took all the t's and multiplied them by 50. This is a problem. I don't want to use the t's already stored in memory. I want to use new things. So I'm going to type the command clear. Now if I run my script, it cleared everything from memory. And I could have done that down here. So let's say g equals 600. Clear. Stored it, and then it went away when I typed clear. I'm going to have a period of 2. So tau is 2, and it's nice to comment your code for other people who want to read it. And then we're going to need to sample a number of time points in here. So whatever our range of t is, we need to choose how many points between 0 and whatever we want our biggest t to be. How many points would we like to sample? And I'm going to sample 100 points. So this will be number of points. All right. Now I'm going to define t. So I want 100 points between 0 and let's just do two periods, so 2 tau. So 0, and I want to make sure these are evenly sampled. So what I'm going to say is go by 2 over number of points until you get to 2 tau. So in this case, 2 over number of points is 1 over 50. So go 0, 1 over 50, 2 over 50, 3 over 50, and so on, until you get to 2 tau. Notice MATLAB is telling me that something's wrong. These squiggles here and the red line on the side. Now this is handy. Uh, MATLAB, before you run the script, if it notices something's happening that's weird, it will tell you. Earlier, when I wasn't putting a semicolon after my statements, it was showing the output. And MATLAB says, hey, you're in a script. You may not want to show all the output. That's going to get messy. So MATLAB offers to put in a semicolon for me. And then both I and your book are used to older versions of MATLAB where you had to group your vectors or lists. And here MATLAB says, hey, I'm fine with those brackets. You can just tell me t is 0 by whatever to 2 tau. So remember from my earlier example, this is 0 in steps of 2 over number of points, all the way up to 2 times tau. And I still need to define my amplitude. Let's have that be 2 as well. Amplitude. And I didn't label what this is. Time array. So our time vector, I think, would probably be simpler to understand at the moment. 
Okay, have I defined everything in my equation? I needed r, I've got r. I needed t, I've got t. I needed tau, I've got tau. I needed pi. Well, does MATLAB know pi? Let's check. Knows lowercase pi, has no idea what uppercase pi means, so lowercase pi it is. So we can enter the equation now and say, I want to store in memory a list of things called x and let those be equal to r times cosine 2 pi t over the period tau. So it's going to take every t, perform this operation on it, and r is just a scalar, it's one thing. Tau is just a scalar, it's one thing. So it's going to operate on the vector t to produce the vector x. And notice if I run that, I've got stored in memory t, and I've got stored in memory x. And now I can plot, and the language of MATLAB is x versus y. So I want t to be on my x-axis and x to be on my y-axis. I don't think there will be output from that other than the graph, but I'll go ahead and suppress it with a semicolon. And there's my graph. Now notice uh, it beautifully plotted a cosine curve. And we have one, two full wavelengths, so it looks like we got our two periods. But we don't have axes, labels, or a title, so let's fix that. Title, um, and that is the command for add a title to your last plot, so it's just going to operate on whatever the last plot was, or whatever plot um, is current. So we have lots of plots up that will start to matter later. MATLAB considers the plot you are working on at the moment, um, often the one that just has focus, which is the one you clicked on last as your current plot, and that's the one it will edit. But we only are dealing with one plot. So plot of x of t equals r, and then I can use basic LaTeX, so c dot, which is just the dot for multiply, cosine 2 pi t over tau. And notice I'm just typing that in LaTeX, slash pi for the pi symbol, slash tau for the tau symbol versus time. And MATLAB knows everything between the single quotes is just a string, so it's not going to try to operate on that. It's just going to understand that as written English. Font size. Um, so I'm going to assign the property font size, which is a standard name. I couldn't just call it whatever I want. But title understands there's a property font size, and I'm going to give that property the value 14. So my font size will be 14 point. And then I want Y label. Be x of t, and again the single quotes mean written English, font size 14, and x label time in seconds. Uh, that looks like a function of based on the way I did the x labels, let's do seconds font size 14. And this should work. Um, I did enter a lot of things at once, so maybe I made a mistake. Nope. And it interpreted the LaTeX just like you'd expect. There's the pi symbol, there's the tau symbol. Everything looks just fine. So something you should play with just to get an idea of how this works is change the number of points to something absurdly small, like three. Um, and let's see what happens. Yeah, so it only had three points to do that with. Uh, or 10. Play around with that and see where you think it gets to be good enough. And then also you can manipulate your amplitude and watch how that happens. So play around with those values uh, just to get a feel for what MATLAB's doing. And if you get confused or mess up your script, you can come back to this video or you can just go to uh, figure 2, 3, or sorry, 3.2 in your book and what follows that. And we're going to see the videoception again as I stop the recording.